In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation. And as always, it's uh, great to be with all of you. Great to be with all of you. As we start off, we'd like to invite Mary to be with us. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. And Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. We also invoke Mary from the Hail Holy Queen. Mary is also our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So in the month of May, which is the month of Mary, let's uh, offer special prayers. Ask Mary to pray with us and to pray for us, so that we can love God with all of our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. So let's uh, say the prayer that she loves most, and that's the Hail Mary, also known as the Angelic Salutation. Together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners. Now, and at the hour of our death, amen. Now we'd like to invite to be with us our spiritual director <clears throat> spiritual director is the holy spirit holy spirit has many wonderful titles holy spirit is known as the paraclete Holy Spirit is also known as the gift of gifts. Holy Spirit is also known as the sweet guest of the soul. Holy Spirit is also known as the counselor, as well as the consoler. Holy Spirit is also known as the interior master. St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans that we really don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans so that we can say Abba. Abba, which means Daddy or Father. So let's invite the Holy Spirit to come to be with us to give us a lot of light in our intellect and the fire of divine love to burn in the very depths of our hearts. As we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. Now shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the 
Same Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, Lady Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Damien, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's good to be with all of you today in our Perseverant Family Conversation. And after praying with you, I promise to pray for you in the greatest of all prayers. And that prayer is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. There's no greater prayer in the world than the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So when I officiate at the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass later on, I'll be praying for all of you. Now place you all on the altar. Offering special prayers. First I'd like to pray. That all of us, as we draw closer and closer to Pentecost, basically in nine days, we could start our Novena to Pentecost, actually today if you like. Like to Pray that all of us would be open to the workings of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps this can be our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. Next intention, I'd like to pray for all of our families, that all of our family members would be saved. Our Lord says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul? Then I'd like to pray also for those will be dying sometime today. That they would be saved. Jesus says, <coughs> what does it profit? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world if he loses his soul? So I'd like to pray for those who are dying, as well as for ourselves, because we, we know neither the day nor the hour that we will pass from this life to the next. Pray for ourselves that we would obtain the grace of all graces. 
the grace of all graces is to die in the state of grace and therefore be saved. It's good to be with all of you and today we have a lot to cover. <clears throat> Today, actually, we have uh, two saints. We have Saint Damien Vister, also known as Saint Damien of Molokai. We have also another saint whose name is Saint John of Avila. Then we uh, would like to just to finish up an idea on the catechetical idea of vows, and then we move into the readings, which are so rich. We have St. Paul, who's moved from Athens to Corinth. And the Lord appears to him and says to be courageous and to preach, because there in Corinth, there are a lot of believers. Paul will spend an hour, a year and a half there. And then we have the gospel. Sure, our Lord speaks about sorrow in the fact that he'll be leaving us. But we'll see him again. He compares his suffering to a woman in labor. When a woman is about to give birth to a child, she suffers. But once the child is born, she forgets because the child has been born. So we've got a lot to cover today in a short time, so let's dive in. I'd like to start, my friends, by talking uh, briefly about the saints that we celebrate today. And there are actually two. There is Saint Damien Vuster, of, known as Saint Damien of Molokai. We have Saint. There's Saint Teresa of Avila, but also there's also Saint John of Avila. It's his feast day today. So let's start with uh, St. Damien. So St. Damien of Molokai, I would invite all of you to perhaps to look into, about 20 years ago, a movie came out in honor of St. Damien and the name of the movie the name of the movie is Molokai. Molokai. And the reason is Molokai is, beca is because of where St. Damien would exercise the years he works on that island as a priest, and he'll actually die there. Father Damien was a religious priest. We talked about religious priests and vows of the congregation of the most sacred heart of Jesus. He also had a brother who was a priest. So I invite you to, to, to see the movie, it's called Molokai. It's really well done. Molokai. 
So I can give you a brief summary of his life and then we can invite him to be one of the members of our Perseverance family. <coughs> he, he was born of, uh, he born in 1840 of a uh, family that basically lived on a farm. They mean well, had a very strong constitution in a very practical sense. And he was ordained a priest and the lepers in Hawaii, Hawaii was not yet annexed to be one of the states of the United States. He offered to go to Molokai to help out, most specifically the lepers that were on that island. So in the surrounding places where they someone contracted leprosy, they were taken to this island of Molokai and basically left there to die a slow, painful death. Leprosy today is called Hansen's disease. So Damien, Damien offered his services to go to Molokai. When he arrived there, there are hundreds of lepers. Some believers, others not believers. Few Catholics, some Protestants. But they all had something in common that they were dying, they were, they were um, suffering leprosy. There's different types of leprosy, but I remember reading up on this, not, I'm not an expert on leprosy or Hansen's disease at all, but the author that I was reading said you could divide leprosy into two different types. One would be a leprosy that would eat away at the <clears throat> at the extremities of the body. Such as the fingers and the, the nose and the ears, the vocal cords, the toes. Eating away at the external limbs or members, then it would stop. And then the leper would be left, in a certain sense, kind of looking like a monster. Maybe had one eye, the nose was eaten away, one ear, have three fingers on one hand and four on another. So just the sight of a leper would cause a lot of a lot of fear. And most people did not want to get close to the leper. That would be the one of the types of leprosy, partial leprosy. Then total leprosy would be Perhaps the best analogy I can give would be, say for example, in a hot summer, you travel to the Philippines or Mexico and you leave an apple on the kitchen table without any air conditioning, 
when you come back, you see that that, that, that apple has rotted. It's shriveled up <clears throat> because of the humidity and the heat. That's an analogy I would give of uh, the full-blown extent of leprosy. In other words, they would be rotting alive. And back then, in the 1800s, there was no medicine or real understanding of leprosy. So especially the inner vital organs would be attacked and then they would die. We can even go back to the time of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in which he had contact with lepers. That's right. And Jesus would actually touch a leper. Sometimes he would heal lepers from a distance. You remember it? in the Gospel of Luke where you got the ten lepers and Jesus tells them to go to the high priest. So Damien arrives on the island and there's a lot of there's a lot of political corruption there. A lot of political corruption there which Damien had to fight against. The work of Father Damien, and this was one of his sufferings, is that he was a religious priest and he wanted his religious superiors to send another priest or religious to help him in this work. But his superiors would not allow for this only until the end of his life would religious nuns come from Syracuse headed by St. Mary Ann Cope and they would continue the mission of Father Damien on the island of Molokai. Father Damien was an extraordinary man. And uh, I would divide his work. Of course, he was a man of deep prayer and a man, a man of God. No doubt about that. <clears throat> but I would divide his work into two different categories. The first would be his spiritual assistance to the people. He was not simply a social worker. Mother Teresa said, we're not social workers, we're brides of Christ. Otherwise, his work would be reduced to activism. So Damien was a man of God. So it could be divided into two different categories. The spiritual work, the other might be called the corporal works of mercy. Spiritual work and the corporal works of mercy. Let's start with the corporal works of mercy. Remember the words of Jesus Christ who said in Matthew chapter 25, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was a foreigner and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and in prison and you tended to me. 
<clears throat> when? Whenever we do it to the least of our brothers and sisters, then we do it to Christ. So, Father Damien utilized his physical strength, his practical intelligence, his physical strength, his practical intelligence, And his great love for God and neighbor to work in the material realm. Now, I'll give you a list of things that he did. He was able to make a pipe system, men are very, very practical men, uh, a, a pipe system so that these lepers would get fresh water that they could drink and they could bathe themselves with the fresh water. Next. He built houses. Houses for the lepers. So they'd have proper lodging. Next, the medical attention to the poor was very limited. So he built a makeshift hospital for these sick people. <clears throat> Next, Father Damien built, would build schools so that the children can learn the basics. In other words, he's, he was working on building up from the very foundation an island where there would be sufficient health centers, educational centers, and especially running water which is essential. We even saw this in Cabrini when she was building the importance of having fresh water. Often he had resistance from the government. There was a lot of political corruption, even immorality there on the island. <laughs> Then, being a Catholic priest of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Father Damien built a church. And invited the people to come to church. So he was a very hard worker, worked very hard physically, and thanks to a robust health in the practical sense that he was brought up and raised on a farm there in Europe, he had a very keen practical sense in how to help people. Now spiritually, <coughs> and these these social works impress all people, whether they were Catholics, Protestants, or even non-believers. In the movie you see this man, Peter O'Toole, who is basically a non-believer, but he was very impressed by Father Damien. <clears throat> So 
So there, in the spiritual realm, Father Damien would baptize. Father Damien would celebrate Mass. Father Damien would bless marriages. Father Damien would confess. <coughs> Father Damien, this would be the work he did very often after he finished his physical work. Father Damien spent long hours in visit, visiting the sick because of course many of these lepers would die and he would be visiting them praying for them praying with them <clears throat> and anointing with them with the anointing of the sick if you like Father Damien would be the Mother Teresa of the 19th century. Mother Teresa, Vincent de Paul, and, and Father Damien would be considered in the same category, how they went out of their way to help out the poorest of the poor. other works that he would do. Father Damien would visit the sick, prepare them to die, give them the anointing of the sick. Then Father Damien would be sometimes hammering wooden coffins for the people that were dying. Then digging the ditches so that they would have a proper burial. Of course, this is one of the corporal works of mercy to bury the dead. And even he, he would try to give these people dignity <clears throat> in the church. If you remember the movie, Father Damien actually form, formed a choir. And the choir did not really sing that well, but Father Damien was trying to bond them together as a community. So he would try, try to, to instill in them that they were created in the image and likeness of God. They had dignity as well as any other human person. I'll tell you a couple of anecdote, anecdotes from <clears throat> the life of Father Damien. There's a scene in the movie there's a scene in the movie where Father Damien is in his little hut and he's praying his breviary he's praying his prayers he's praying his breviary And there at night, a woman who didn't have too much of the leprosy comes to his door and tries to seduce him, to make him fall. 
And Father Damien rejects that temptation. It's a very good movie, a very good film, and it shows the moral rectitude and the courage of Father Damien. Eventually the authorities are going to humiliate him by forcing him to take certain tests to prove that he was innocent. They were trying to prove that he had committed immorality. He was publicly humiliated. And it's interesting, who came to his defense? Who came to his defense was a very famous English writing poet whose name was Robert Louis Stevenson. Robert Louis, Robert Louis Steve, Stevenson. A very, very famous poet. Robert Louis Stevenson defended the innocence and the impeccable character of Father Damien, who never gave in to the seductions of this individual. Very, very interesting. These were the two great sufferings of Father Damien. These were the two su great sufferings of Father Damien. Number one is that Father Damien, being a religious priest, wanted to live in community with another priest. But his provincial and the bishop never sent him another priest. Only at the end of his life, as I mentioned earlier, is that the religious sisters from Syracuse, New York, the mother superior was Mother Superior was Saint Saint Marianne Cope She heard of Father Damien and was given permission to travel with a group of nuns <coughs> to Molokai. And she would she would eventually carry out, she would eventually carry it and continue the mission of Father Damien. But this was another suffering of Father Damien. And this is one of, this is one of the, my favorite scenes in the movie I've saw the movie maybe 15 years ago. I have to see it again, but a great movie. It shows Father Damien. Father Damien was a priest, but also he was a sinner. We're, we're all sinners. <clears throat> we're all sinners. He couldn't go to confession. A priest cannot confess in the mirror. Priests, bishops, archbishops, as well as the Pope himself, were all sinners. 
We all have to go to confession individually with a priest. <clears throat> so the scene is charming. And the scene presents a ship. A ship that is drawn close to the shores of Molokai. And Father Damien, aware of this, on the ship was a priest. I think it may have even been a bishop, but a priest or bishop. So Father Damien, they would not disembark from the ship because one of the one of the sufferings or the fears is if one disembarked then there's a danger of con of contagion and have, having to be quarantined or isolated from the other people so they would not disembark from the boat, from the ship. So Father Damien <coughs> Father Damien gets in his rowboat and he's rowing. It's a great scene. He's rowing and rowing and rowing. so that he can get as close to the ship as possible. Then you see that charming scene where there is the the priest or the bishop on the upper deck and Father Damien is actually yelling out his sins. He's yelling out his sins with the priest so that he could receive absolution from his sins. I really believe that that's a very, very important point in the life of Father Damien. And as Alondra points out, we're blessed that we don't have to yell out our sins publicly. What a what a blessing, huh? <laughs> because true, there are other people on deck. So we're blessed that we're able to make a private confession, an anonymous, quiet confession and receive absolution. We should be more grateful and thankful for the sacrament of confession. What do you think? We should be very grateful for the fact that we can, in the United States, receive confession in an anonymous state. So Father Damien longed to have another priest so that he could also make his own sacramental confession. Now, there was a protocol when someone came on the island never to touch a leper. Never to touch a leper, but Father Damien discarded that protocol. He would touch lepers, he would embrace lepers. And Father Damien, when he arrived on the island, he knew interiorly He knew interiorly that sooner or later
sooner or later that he would contract what we called Hansen's disease back there. Back then it was called leprosy. He knew sooner or later that this would be the reality. And one day when he was in his he was in his kitchen, <clears throat> he was preparing his tea and I guess it was accidentally but providentially the hot boiling water accidentally poured on his fingers and he didn't feel he didn't feel any pain which was an indication that the nerve endings were already being attacked by leprosy and true that father Damien did contract the leprous the leprosy and once he was aware of this in one of his one of his homilies he no longer said the lepers but he said he said we the lepers we the lepers so he contracted this disease And irrespective of this disease that he contracted, Father Damien kept working. As a priest, as a father, as a friend, as a brother, And as a lover in Christ. So Father Damien worked as long as he possibly can. And the leprosy spread and grew stronger. And you can see pictures of Father Damien confined to a bed. You can see the leprosy had already arrived at his face. He served uh, in Molokai for about 16 years. And he dies a true lover of God, showing his love for suffering humanity. And there in Washington, D.C., A statue was placed of Father Damien Zwister Molokai being honored publicly as one of the greatest men in Hawaii, which eventually Hawaii and Alaska would be the last two states for us to annex of the 50 states of the United States of America. So my friends, St. John of the Cross St. John of the Cross says that in the twilight of our existence we will be judged on love. 
and read Matthew chapter 28. in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gives us the road map to heaven. And that would be the corporal works of mercy. I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty. You gave me to drink. You built these pipelines of fresh water. I was naked and you clothed me. He clothed them with sanctifying grace by baptism. I was a foreigner and you welcomed me. They are rejected by society, but welcomed by Father Damien. I was sick and in prison, and you visited me. That he did, dedicating many hours to visiting the sick, the suffering, and the dying. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. What a marvelous, marvelous, marvelous saint we have. In Saint Damien. So let's ask Saint Damien, Zvister of Molokai, to pray for us that we would be truly men and women of God, loving God, and loving God and our neighbor. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Damien of Molokai, pray for us. <clears throat>